Hello and welcome to another Hi-Fi update. Today I'm going to show you my Logitech Z5500 uh, 5.1 THX certified surround sound system. Now this technically is, is a cheaper audio component, it's really meant for computers and games consoles, or you could use it for TVs as well. And it's about 10 years old, retail price at the time I think was about 280 for retail, but you could always find it discounted for uh, about £200 or thereabouts. And for many years running, it was pretty much the top computer surround sound system that you could buy. I remember Custom PC magazine in the UK gave it their top award for top computer speakers for multiple years in a row. In fact, I think until it actually went out of production, so it's no longer available, although Logitech do have a newer uh, system out, but I believe it's a less powerful, sort of less expensive uh, system that they're currently running. Well, it is a 5.1 surround sound system, but I've only pulled two of the uh, satellites off the wall. Frankly, I can't be bothered to get the others off as well, just for the purposes of showing them in the video. And it needed cleaning up, contacts needed cleaning, it needed dusting as well. And I thought while I was going to uh, all this trouble, I'd see if I could uh, do a few things to actually upgrade the sound quality of the system. And uh, yeah, I'll show that now. Now, the first thing I was intending to upgrade, and the most obvious thing really to do with the system, is simply to replace the speaker wire. Now, the speaker wire it comes with is a uh, very, very basic speaker wire, very thin, straight wire. Thankfully, they soldered the ends to stop them uh, fraying, and it sort of just plugs uh, directly into the spring clips at the back. And it's provided with a decent length of wire for each speaker as well, which is nice. And uh, the wire gauge is 18, so it's 18 gauge wire, but it's very, very basic, and it picks up absolutely all the interference going. In fact, I've even picked up actual radio chatter with this particular speaker wire. It's absolutely hopeless at uh, cutting out any interference. And it doesn't do the sound quality any favours uh, at all. Now, what I'm going to replace it with is uh, this cable that I've got here. Now, this is cable that I bought some years ago for uh, multi-room installation. Now the cable itself is uh, Kimber cable, it's Kimber Quick 12 and you can see I actually bought originally, I bought 42 metres of the stuff. I think the current retail price on it is about £7 a metre. And it's called uh, installation cable. It's really for using uh, hidden inside your house, hidden inside the drywall, hidden under the floors. And uh, as such, it has to meet various um, fire retardant standards and electrical safety standards, uh, which the cable does. And the cable is very basic looking. As I say, it's meant to be hidden, so you don't see it. It's not supposed to be flashy, uh, Gucci cables for your hi-fi system, but it does its job well. This particular cable is a uh, 14.4 uh, gauge cable. It's uh, called 4 simply because there are 4 of them. Now, when you have 4 rather than just the 2 wires, uh, the gauge is actually dropped by three places, so it's actually the equivalent to 11 gauge cable, although Kimber actually sell it as 12 gauge. Now quite often with speaker wire, the gauges of the wire aren't exactly the same as the actual wire gauge uh, measurements, and Kimber do tend to be conservative with the rating of their cable. Now because there are four, you can either use it for two speakers, or you could use it for by wiring, or you could use it for by amping. If you opened it up more, you could split the uh, the cables more. Or you can actually twist them together, which is what I'm going to do in, in a minute. And you basically have the two white twisted together and the two yellow twisted together, basically to give you 12 gauge uh, cable. So uh, I'll do that now. Uh, so here we have the wire twisted together. Uh, the 14.4 has been twisted into single wire for left and right. So that's fine. Now you can put those bare wires directly into the uh, spring clips at the back of the speaker uh, or into the back of the spring clips on the back of the uh, subwoofer amplifier unit. That's fine except for the fact this wire is very very thick and it only just fits. And it's doable just but you've got to remember normally this is against the wall and this is against the wall so you're doing it by feel and pretty soon these get frayed and they just won't go in. It's an absolute pain in the rear. Even with a thin cable that it actually comes with it can be really difficult. So what do you do? Well normally fit plugs on the end of the wire, pretty simple. And you'd fit things like this, normal banana plugs. You put these on here, they screw on, you put the plastic sleeves back on and, and job done. You plug them into your amplifier, everything's great. And so they don't cost all that much, brilliant. Slight problem, these spring clips, way too small for banana plugs. Great, so you could get some proper 
banana plug sockets and you could you know, take this off, put this inside, solder it all up and then your banana plugs will fit perfectly in the black and uh, job done. Not a hassle to go to just to make it fit, there's a much easier solution. Instead of using the standard size banana plug like this that you use in hi-fi equipment, you can use this much thinner banana plug uh, that's meant for spring clips. It's sometimes called a speaker pin rather than uh, an actual banana plug. And they uh, say much, much thinner prong to go into the speakers now, so it goes in no trouble at all. And uh, it's job done. So it's just a question now of putting the wire on the speaker, but there's still another problem. When this is up, it's actually like that, and it's mounted against the wall. You put this speaker pin in, and uh, literally won't fit, sticking into the wall. So still got another problem. And the solution to the problem is simply to use special bent pins rather than using the straight one. You use the bent pin, which will go into the speaker as so, and can actually be bent around so it actually fits on the back of the speaker, uh, even when the speaker is mounted against the wall. So and these things are available online, so they're ever so cheap. You just buy them in bulk uh, for your setup, and it just makes fitting the wire to your spring clips much much easier gives much better connection and saves any problem with fraying so one of the things i would say with any sort of speaker setup do yourself a favor and get some proper banana plugs or speaker pins or whatever kind of connector you use connect them well to the wire it just makes life so much easier if you've got good connections on your equipment now have the wire with the speaker pins fitted and it can easily be put into uh, the spring clips on the back of the speakers and here on the back of uh, the amplifier fits uh, nicely in place, uh, there's no fraying, there's no possible of uh, any sort of shorting or anything like that. It's just very, very easy to put uh, the wire in and uh, sort of take the wire out again. Very simple solution and allows me to use the much thicker gauge wire. Remember we're using 12 gauge wire, high quality wire, compared to the 18 gauge cheapo stuff that I was using before. Another thing I like to do with surround sound uh, a cable is uh, make it obvious which cable is for which speaker. Now do this very very simply uh, by putting electric tape of different colours around each of the cables at both ends, both at the amplifier end and at the speaker end and that way at a glance you can immediately identify uh, which speaker cable is for which speaker. Just saves a lot of time and effort and hassle and uh, stops silly mistakes from happening. Another thing I would say with the speaker cable and this goes for uh, all hi-fi equipment is try and make sure that the speaker cable is the same length for each speaker. Now normally with hi-fi speakers that's pretty simple, you've only got two and you make sure that both speaker cables are the same length. If you have one of the cables a different length from the other they will have different electrical properties and if they have different electrical properties they're going to sound different. Both cables need to be the same length even if one cable is massively too long for yeah, practical reasons, it, one cable needs to be the length that it is, the other cable, there's plenty of slack, you still need both cables to be the same length. Now with surround sound, it isn't practical in my setup to have same length cable on all five speakers, but both rear speakers have cable that is the same length as each other, and all three of the front speakers have cable which is the same length as each other. In my setup, the, uh, the actual sub amplifier unit is near the rear speakers so that the rear speakers do have shorter wire than the front speakers um, but they say the two pairs have exactly the same length wire and I say the front speaker center channel also has the same length as the other front left and right keeping the wire the same length very very important for good sound quality it doesn't matter whether you're using cheap speaker wire or expensive you should always have speaker wire that is the same length So I've sorted the speakers out with better speaker wire and uh, now I can focus the attention on the actual subwoofer unit. Now here's the subwoofer unit, it's quite big, got a 10 inch uh, speaker on the front, big base port on the side. And turn it round and you can see the actual amplifier for the unit is actually built into the back of here, not just for the subwoofer but for the satellites as well. And the, uh, the digital control unit actually plugs into the VGA socket. Uh, on here. So this is the main sort of heart of the system, it's not just the actual sub. And uh, 
one of the things that can be immediately improved with this is simply a physical thing. If I can turn it up side down, the unit is of course fairly heavy. And you can see uh, underneath it has four rubber feet. And I use the term feet rather loosely as they're basically just big rubber pads. And uh, they're not doing the sound quality any favours at all. Pretty much absolute garbage. In fact, on my current wooden floor that this is sitting on, which is fairly uneven, the thing actually wobbles. That won't do at all. So I'm going to change the feet um, for spikes. I'll do that now. And here we have the subwoofer with the three feet fitted. Three spike feet, three feet. Gives better resonance control than four. Three feet. It's like three legged stool, it can't wobble. These are just basic speaker spikes. Um, you can pick these up ever so cheaply, about £3.50 for three of them. And it comes with an insert, drill a hole, put the insert in using a very large Allen key, and then uh, screw them in. And they can be height adjusted, and you can set up the height of the subwoofer using the, uh, or the level of the subwoofer using the uh, spirit level that I use for the turntable. The final tweak to the system is simply this, and it is normally comes with standard. Uh, figure eight mains lead which plugs into there. Thankfully, it doesn't have a captive uh, mains lead but that normally just plugs into there as so. We'll we replace this bog standard cable and replace it with a hi fi cable. And it's only cheap equipment, so we'll just use one of the basic leads. This is uh, Russ Andrews' uh, yellow lead, picked up for about 15 pounds uh, back in the day. They're no longer made, but you can pick them up on eBay. And uh, unfortunately, uses an IEC socket, so it won't. Plug in directly in, but you, what you use is an adapter IC to figure of eight. Put that on and push it uh, straight in the back. Simple. So we've added our high quality speaker wire, 14 4 gauge wire. We've added uh, specialist mains lead and we've added the little spiked feet under the subwoofer. Now, all of these things added together on the system will alter the performance. But what actual gains have been achieved? And the answer is the sound is much cleaner, it's much clearer, it's much more precise, but at the same time it is much fuller and much richer and much more body to the sound. In fact, if you go back to the original wiring and just plugged it directly into the mains and had the subwoofer wobbling about on its little rubber feet, the sound there was all tiz and boom. And uh, sounded quite sort of tinny and cheap by comparison. Doing these mods has made it sound much more like hi-fi equipment and much less like cheap computer. Uh, speakers and the mods have been uh, really worthwhile. Now it's worth bearing in mind I had a lot of these things lying around anyway. I've got loads of mains leads, already had that, already had the spike feet, although the spike feet are very very cheap and already had the speaker wire, masses of speaker wire from previous uh, installations that I've used. The only thing I actually had to go out and buy were these little speaker pins and they were very very cheap uh, um, from Amazon or eBay wherever I got them from and, and that's it. But it does show that you can tweak and improve the performance of even cheaper audio gear. It doesn't just have to be the expensive stuff that you use these mods on. And if you shop around, you can buy you know, decent quality speaker wire cheaply. You can get decent quality mainly as a second hand. It's only been the, the spike feet cost next to nothing and the little speaker pins cost next to nothing. It doesn't cost an awful lot and you can lift the performance of the equipment uh, uh, quite markedly. One of the other things that's worth uh, talking about is the, the specs for consumer level uh, audio equipment. Uh, this setup, remember it's 5.1 surround, so not the 2.1 that you, you're seeing here. But the subwoofer and the five uh, satellites is rated at 550 watts RMS. Not peak music power, but actually RMS. Hugely powerful, yet if you buy a hi-fi surround sound receiver, the power will probably be 100 watts RMS or maybe 150 watts RMS. It makes this equipment seem phenomenally good. Very, very powerful. Very, very good value for money. But the consumer audio level equipment exaggerates. Firstly, it has added all the channels together. They've added the subwoofer, which is about 185 watts. And it's added the, uh, the satellites, which I think are 67 watts RMS. And it's added them all together to come to a figure of approximately 550. Now if it's a hi-fi piece of equipment it gives the power measurement per channel. So with a, the hi-fi receiver say it's 100 watts per channel it's per channel per speaker. Here this one offers 67 watts RMS per channel so if it was a hi-fi uh, unit it would be rated at 67 watts RMS not 550 but 
it's still exaggerating. That 67 watts RMS figure is given at a distortion level of less than 10%. That is a, a consumer level measurement, not a hi-fi measurement. That's not hi-fi, it's not high fidelity. Basically, they've been very, very lenient with what they, uh, what they can measure and what they will actually allow. And 10% uh, distortion is trashed. The sound will be completely destroyed. It's just a joke. Now, I remember when these came out, um, one of the reviewing sites online gave them a real good, hard, thorough testing. And they actually measured them. And they actually measured the, the satellites at a usable, high-quality, 13 watts RMS. That's 1.3 watts RMS each and that's all they were capable of while adhering to sort of hi-fi standards so if this was a, a hi-fi surround sound system rather than a, a consumer level the way it would be measured the way it would be marketed it would be a 13 watt uh, per channel surround sound system not 67 watts RMS no as sure as hell not 550 watts 13 watts RMS very, very important when you buy consumer level uh, audio gear that you realise that they exaggerate the specs as something chronic. It's not to say that this system doesn't sound good. It sounds very, very good indeed. And it does go very, very loud indeed. And it is THX certified, so it's very precise and detailed sound. But don't for one minute think that this equipment um, can compete with uh, proper hi-fi when it comes to music. Now, simple budget hi-fi setup like this, NAD amplifier, Marantz CD player, mission speakers, will easily outperform that Logitech uh, surround sound system. When it comes to music, literally no comparison. Good quality hi-fi equipment, and it needn't be expensive. Easily outperforms uh, cheaper audio gear every single time when it comes to music. So there we have it, a few tweaks to my Logitech uh, Z5500 surround sound system have managed to lift its performance uh, quite markedly. And so it's always worth looking to see how you can uh, tweak and uh, enhance the performance of your equipment. And a lot of these things can be done quite cheaply with either with things you've got lying around or just with the uh, sort of cheap and second-hand uh, components that you can buy online. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.